I'm cr I'm cranking out these videos on time. Oh yeah. Mm hmm Love and Marriage De Detroit. Girl. We start off Brandon using the word swagger jacking. Who talks like this? What is this? I don't like Brandon. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I am putting it out there and they're setting this up to where nobody's liking Brandon. And because Christina is going to stick by Brandon to her own detriment. Ah, nobody wants to be around here. Nobody wants to be around snake people. So with that being said, Brandon. Okay, so we have Anthony and Latoya. Anthony's crying. Latoya is like, look. I knew that you were resenting me. And he's like, I don't resent you. But man, you crying because you felt that your opportunity was missed. Stop it. I wish you would call a spade a spade. We ain't stupid. Okay. So Russell's trying to plan Kobe's 30-year-old birthday party behind her back, which should be nice. Chelsea and them talking about it. Kobe was talking to Chelsea that there's a pos that she wants to do an influence or collab. See, this is what's happening. Kobe, Kobe is an influencer, and what she's doing is she's reaching out with different companies that she likes, and she wants to do some type of collab, you know, uh, some type of promotion for them, and when she realizes that when the company tells her that Christina is actually doing it. And so then she's reaching out to Christina and be like, Hey, how about we working on this together? Christina is interpreting this, that you're taking away revenue from me. And here's Kobe. The lesson that Kobe is learning is this. Now I get Christina's side because this is the big blow up. And I guess I might as well skip to it. The big blow up is at the skating ring. Kobe is trying to say, I'm not taking business from you. What I'm doing is I'm trying to collab. That's what I want to do. So we've talked about collabing and Christina's like, I'm cool with collabing. If you bring somebody else that we, that I am no longer, that I am not doing business with right now. And then we do this together. So then we're eating the revenue together. Christina's like, if I do a collab with you together, then some of my money is going to have to be shared with you. Because it seems as if she's thinking that we are not going to make the same. I'm not going to make the same amount of money. You're eating off my contact that kind of a thing and this person may not want to do two collaborations right she's not going to want to do Kobe and Christina because we simply because we're eating we'd be eating from the same table when in fact what Kobe could do could have done she could uh, both Kobe and Christina could have done this a little differently what they could have done is Christina could have answered the phone. And then Kobe and Christina could have had a meeting together. And then they could have had a meeting with these other people and said, hey, would you be willing to give us more money? We'd split it and we could work the deals out together. So then no one feels like somebody's losing something. Christina feels like she's losing something. But instead... Kobe makes this dig that I think was not a, was necessary. She's like, I'm not a selfish person and I would view this differently. Okay, that wasn't necessary because now you're calling the woman selfish when in fact, 
what she's wanting to do is to protect her relationship and brand deal that she already has established. You are trying to say, well, you have this brand deal, but it really isn't yet it really isn't something that you've done anything towards yet. It hasn't a campaign that you have started yet. So you could have had a collaboration. However, what you could have said, Christina, is another thing. I don't want to do a collaboration with this. And Kobe would have respected you saying, I don't want to do a collaboration with this. We can figure out something else differently and we could come together and approach collaborating together with different brands and we can see what we can do like there's so many ways that we could do this and honestly Kobe what she was doing was passive aggressive she didn't call you back and what she's trying to tell you in your in her passive aggressive way and here's the thing you don't work in a passive aggressive way you rather to be told face to face which I get. You don't want to beat around the bullet. What you want is for her to be like, make it plain. Tell me what it is. And I am 100% there for you in wanting to make it plain. However, what a passive aggressive person does is ignores your phone call and once they ignore the phone call, that is their way of saying, I don't want to do it. And what you should have done is dropped it. You could have went and told the person and said, hey, you know, she's not returning my phone calls. You already had a brain deal with that person. And so what I'm going to do is, you know, I'm going to just back off. Let me know if you're doing another campaign, then maybe we can work something out in the future. But for this, maybe I should just, you know, take a step back. But I also could still, you know, I really still like your clothing. I really still like what you're doing. I can do something and not, I could do something that's not, you know, she's not willing, you know, it's clear that she doesn't want to do it with you, with me. And she feels like I'm stepping on her toes. And she may be feeling I'm stepping on her toes, which is why she's not returning my call. And so like, I'm still willing to kind of post something to be like, hey, I I enjoy, you know, your brand, whatever, whatever, whatever. Like, I mean, there's all of these things that you could absolutely have done this better. And this would have turned out well instead of this argument, because this argument went around and around and um unnecessarily and I think that uh, there were a few low blows what I did not like is the men getting involved I didn't like Russell getting into the middle of this because it was unnecessary for Russell to get involved and then Brandon gets into it. And Brandon, that knows nothing. Because you know what? Here's Brandon here saying. You don't want Brandon. Brandon doesn't want Kobe and Christina to be around each other. Because Kobe is going to influence Christina. She's going to force questions to be asked. She's going to force Christina to stop placating and ignoring things and ask you direct questions. And once Christina really starts asking direct questions, she starts getting out there. I know she says she'll never leave you, but there's going to be a breaking point with Christina and Christina may actually leave you. And there's no prenup. And so Brandon gets into this whole, she, he, he's thinking that he claims that he is defending his wife. And so he's speaking up and to defend his wife. 
man, sir, you're not defending your wife. You're not, you don't play this for stupid. You're not defending your wife. What you were trying to do is to ensure that Kobe and Christina aren't cool because it is to your best interest that they don't be cool. And you don't know the facts. And so when Russell is like, do you even know what you're talking about? Not really. I appreciate your honesty. And then when he calls her a Kobe cat, it is clear that Latoya is looking around like, this conversation is the childish thing. I, I'm, too, I'm too grown for this. Are we talking huh? And then you see in the preview for next episode, um, Brandon and Christina are both fugazi. They are so fugazi. I mean, they're not going to have anybody. And the thing is, is that she's like, oh, I think it's clear that Latoya is taking a side because Latoya is not trying to be bothered with, here's the trend. Brandon and Christina's issues is spilling over into everybody else's issues. Everybody else now has issues because of Brandon and Christina. And she's like, I'm not dealing with this. So here we are. Um, I can't remember who's 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 sorority sisters. My line sister's birthday today, but I can't remember who's sorority sisters. Anyway, um, I moved on. Christina and Brandon. Christina and Brandon thinking about them. They're in counseling. And he didn't return home. They're doing their marriage mentor. And she's talking about it feels like he's resentful of being actually married. And I think that there, you know, look, I think there is a natural resentment that takes place when, when you are married. I know that people don't want to hear this, but marriage is not freedom. And when you're used to being free to make decisions that doesn't affect your partner, when you're used to making decisions, when you're used to moving however you want to move, when you're used to not being responsible for other people's feelings and emotions, and you're used to not raising some kids and you're used to not having that sense of responsibility, and now you have all that, people want it, but they don't realize that once you have it, that there are some ramifications of this. And the ramifications is that you are, um, you have to uphold a standard. And people are offended and people are resentful of the fact that they have to now, there's a part of their freedom that is lost. And I'm gonna be honest, like it being married and, and having kids was a hard adjustment for me. And I think it was an adjustment for my husband too. I think that he's a little bit more and less of a, an adjustment than it was for him than it was for me. But no, I think it's for both of us. Maybe he may not have admitted, but I think it was for both of us. We love our freedom. Individually, we love our freedom. And I think that I do see other married couples and when they make comments about like what they observe from the from my husband and I's relationship, they make comments about how free we are. And the more that I watch even this show and the more that I think about it, that is one thing I would never want. Um, I do check myself sometimes, even when I want to put parameters on him or even put parameters on me. And we do have our boundaries, but I still am like, yeah, no, like I process in my head, would I be offended if this was happening to me? Like, and I just don't want my freedom taken. And when I say freedom is like, I mean, there's some things, like I said, I, I don't do, but I think that there's a level of freedom that we all, that him and I both have um, and there are some things that I'm like, yeah, I don't like this being done. I don't think we should, this should be done. Um, so there are those conversations, but the, um, I 
think Brandon could have a career without cheating. And the issue is that he doesn't want to put the time in to make her feel comfortable because you are a liar. See, all of the other guys are problematic and they get on my nerves too. But the core difference is that they're not liars. <laughs> you are. And because you're a liar, whatever trust you're trying to build in your relationship can't happen because you're a liar. There's that. Um, okay, Latoya and Anthony are talking. They're at church with the parents. Her Latoya is, is a her dad's the bishop, her mother's the pastor. Anthony's talking to her dad, and she's he's explaining why he was really upset. But her dad explains to Logan, like, look, it wasn't that I wasn't supporting your decision. It's just that I'm looking at the bigger picture. Your family is being hurt. And I care more about the family unit and these kids than I do about how you feel in your dream. And I'm going to be honest, this is the problem when you get married. If you decide to have kids, you can't just drop your kids off and think that they're good. I'm sorry. You have to figure this out. You have to be, if you want to be a good father, you can't leave it up to the grandfather. Like, these are your kids. Grandfather is not responsible grandfather is not the one that he wants to step up and stand up and protect him grandfather will do it but he doesn't he shouldn't have to he got a daddy who's who's supposed to be in his life and who's supposed to be dad so i'm sorry like you're not going to get people who are going to support your dreams over the health and welfare of protecting your family and keeping the kids good. If the kids were good and well adjusted to you traveling back and forth and living in a different state and doing all of this, then he would be cool with it. But your kids were not good. And you shouldn't have to have her dad tell you how your kids were not good. You should have known that. You knew it, but you didn't give a damn enough and you thought that video phone and telephone was was good enough to be present physically because they needed you physically there i'm gonna let you know right now i travel for work i go to different conferences and i went this year to south carolina and i was gone for like I think I was gone for like three days for three nights, four days. When I tell you that my son had the biggest meltdown. Now I'm usually away for a little, not that long. It's usually a shorter period of time. When I tell you that he had the biggest meltdown in ever and they're like, Elizabeth, you cannot stay away from this baby. He's he was seven he's now eight and he's not a baby I get it but you can't stay away from him this long I hear it I am present and I'm like he's he good now my daughter she's like I don't give a damn oh I want to be there she's like she's adjusted but my son mm -mm. and you have to take that with you have to embrace that that's the consequence of having kids. Um, Kobe and Lauren are talking. That was the away scene. Okay, Russell is talking about this gym. He goes and he meets about this gym. And he does say us purchasing the gym. So you can't say us purchasing the gym and not have Kobe there 
to see the gym. Is she signing the documents? Is her name on this? Because if her name is on this, then she needs to be there. Um, and when they're at the skating ring at Eastside, which clearly people are like, Eastside, I am not from Detroit, so I don't know the issues with the east side uh, a town but anyway kobe and russell kobe's like russell's like we're buying this gym and she's like oh so we really are buying this gym i'm sorry am i going to the gym am i going to meet the guy well, what do you need to meet him for? And then when he made the comment saying, um, when she's explaining that you know what I'm doing in all my business meetings and stuff like that, that's the kind of respect that I want you to have. He says, okay, when there's business meetings that are appropriate, then you will get an invite. Russell. Mm, mm, mm. If her name's on this paperwork, then she needs to get an invite. She needs to, she, and then when she explains why she needs to be, she want what research that she wants to do in order to sign on to this, he's like, she makes a good point and then says a small point. Let me tell you something. I don't advocate, I do not advocate that people are violent to anybody else. I am not. But when I tell you, that our marriage would not be able to survive if he talks to me this way on a day to day, it would not. Because what you're not going to do is belittle me on a consistent basis and think that I'm supposed to be okay with your belittling me. Like you want, you are cool with belittling me in public on national television. I can think and feel and be present and have, like, I do these things. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. She is not a kept woman. She is not a feeble-minded woman. How dare you continuously belittle this woman? I don't like it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're not going to convince me otherwise. It's not okay to talk to people this way. And you know, like, I would never belittle, I, I don't want to belittle my husband in public. And so the concept that he feels so comfortable at belittling her in public just angers me to know. And I'm trying not to like, <laughs> anyway, so, well, I mean, this show is so toxic and Carlos King was on his, um, um, was on his uh, YouTube reality with the King show and he made a comment about how different creators are commenting on how toxic these men are and how the men are in shoot and then he's like these are the kind of men that a lot of women are living with I'm a and the, how they're married to these kind of husbands I will admit that they have some traits but I am going to say that if my husband spoke to me on a continuing, consistent basis, as some of these men have spoken to their wives, we would not make it. We wouldn't. Because, and, and, it's, and it's shocking how comfortable these men are with belittling their women. It's 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 shocking and it's very frustrating to watch. On that note, bye.